Welcome back to Mock the Mock, where we take a look at someone else's mock draft. And I'm mocking, giving my views, thoughts, and opinions. We've got a great one for you today. We're checking out PFF's own Trevor uh, Sikama, friend of the channel, Trevor Sikama. But uh, what's cracking like it is your boy, Bro Schmo, just in case you did not know. So go ahead, become bro and subscribe. Leave this video a thumbs up if you enjoy the content. As always, let me know what you think in the comment section below where we have that nice, beautiful, sensual football discourse. Let's go ahead and get this sucker started. I'm assuming it's all based on the current. Okay, okay, this is. Using the updated draft order following week four's Sunday night games. Got it. All right, let's go ahead and get this sucker started as we got the Chicago Bears taking Caleb Williams. If you are picking first, you are picking Caleb Williams. Almost any team. Almost. Almost. But Justin Fields uh, looked better for the most part this week, this past weekend, but I think that's more of a indictment on the Denver Broncos state of affairs when it comes to their defense uh and the hot seat Vance Joseph finds himself on fairly early in his uh tenure here with the Broncos who actually just released Randy Gregory by the way yeah uh, I'm doing this Wednesday morning and all this news is starting to come out also had JC Jackson traded to the Patriots which makes sense he's familiar with the system you could get them for dirt cheap in terms of uh, trade capital. And uh, Christian uh, Gonzalez is out for the season. But that's neither here nor there. We're talking about the Chicago Bears. If you're picking first overall, you're probably moving on from Justin Fields and maybe trying to spin them for picks. Chicago Bears are also the uh, second overall pick via the Carolina Panthers. I know there's some discussion here about, okay, you could go, Marvin Harris Jr., but you could also go with one of the tackles, Olufashanu, a lot of people, that's kind of their top tackle. I don't care. <laughs> Both are good picks, but I this is my thought, is you have Darnell, you just drafted Darnell Wright in the first round. You've seen promise from Braxton Jones. I know he's been hurt this year, but you saw promise last year. He had a good first game this season before getting hurt. So, I just assume, go get another playmaker next to uh, DJ Moore. I, I have my, I don't know if they bring back Darnell Washington, but they don't have a receiver currently on the roster like Marvin Harrison Jr. Don't talk about Chase Claypool. I don't think he's a part of this team anymore. <laughs> So they grab that. You get this for your franchise quarterback. I think you're trending in a great direction if you're the Chicago Bears. Uh oh, this is his two round. Hey, Xavier Leggett. You mean Xavier Leggett's not gonna be in the mock draft? That's wild. Is he? I didn't know he was even in the mock draft database for PFF yet. Interesting. Must have just updated recently. Las Vegas Raiders, they're taking Drake May. I think this is a basically identical to how I approached it, so. I like it. I like it. Uh, Drake May. Uh, some people don't think he's maybe the number two. I think he's. I think he's not comfortably there, but I feel like he sits there. And then we can start thinking about like Bo Nix, Michael Penix, Quinn Ewers, uh, JJ McCarthy, Shadur Sanders. Uh, you could even pop maybe a Cam Ward in there. Like, there's a lot of names. Circa uh, just going around here but drake may feels like yeah no he's qb2 he's someone i'd be willing to uh go with in the in the top 10 the top five he's young he's got the arm go get it raiders you got jimmy g there so if you don't want to start may out from day one you don't have to but i think you probably could denver broncos go Liatu Latu. So my only reservation here with Liatu Latu in the like top portion is just what the combine will say about his neck injury, the meds, medical checkup, because Washington didn't feel comfortable putting him on the field after. They were like, nah, you ain't playing for us uh, after this injury, after that neck injury. And it was UCLA. They were like, oh, yeah, no, you, you seem fine. I 
believe his doctor was the same doctor that did Peyton Manning's deck. So UCLA, they put him back on the field and he's tear, torn it up the last two seasons. So that's my biggest reservation. This isn't a guy that's going to bring you a power, a power game. Like he's very finesse, uh, but he has been uber productive there for UCLA. Again, the Broncos just releasing Randy Gregory. They're not happy with their pass rush situation. Uh, I don't think quarterback is necessarily on the table, at least financially, but I mean, Golly, dude, the, like the dead cap hit would be catastrophic. So he's going Liao to Liao to here. Uh, kind of already expressed my reservations about that, but I mean, I mean, would, where do you go there? Then like, I think Jared Verse would be fine. You could say Chop Robinson, but Liao, Liao to Liao to. Yeah, I think he would be in that edge one conversation, if not for me, for that neck. I just kind of want the the green light on it, you know. Oh, man, the Minnesota Vikings are taking J.J. McCarthy. I got to read this sucker. Though PFF's big board would tell you that the number five overall pick is a bit high for J.J. McCarthy, it feels like the NFL is keen on his potential and doesn't feel like the Vikings will bring Kirk Cousins back on another contract extension. McCarthy is playing better under pressure this season, 64.9 pass grade. That category compared to 44 last season. He boasts an elite overall passing grade to boot. To boot. Uh, yeah, his only down game this year has been against Bowling Green. Uh, they they just kind of like started going into Big Ten play with Rutgers and uh, what is it, Nebraska. So they haven't had any like serious competition yet. That's kind of where I'm like, okay, let's see. Let's see who you are, J.J. McCarthy. But it would be great if like we have this for sure qb3 in the top 10 if you're minnesota and you're not confident you're gonna be drafted as high as five I, I mean i honestly think that's a better minnesota team than like i i have i have i have my reservations that minnesota will be even picking in the top 10. like i think that offense gonna keep them in games the defense might be a little bit surprising here now with marcus davenport healthy maybe not that much surprising but they, maybe they creep a little bit more towards average so it's gonna be interesting it really is uh the new york jets take olu fashan here at number six he's a great scheme fit for what they got going there i uh, I, some people will be like, oh, I'll just keep Elijah Vera Tucker at tackle. And I don't mind that. But then you still got to look at that left tackle spot. And I mean, uh, do you feel, do you, you want to bring back my, uh, Mackay Becton? Like Dwayne Brown, he's probably at the end of uh, his career at this point. So uh, maybe the easier option is just drafting a tackle here. And Joe Douglas would love this pick. This is Joe Douglas, like trenches. Ah, oh, ah, oh, that's Joe Douglas, man. He loves drafting him and like him some trench players. Cincinnati Bengals go Joe Alt. Love that. Joe Alt being available here is a okay. He is a top ten pick. He is up there with Olush Fashanu. I don't know why people pivoted off off him uh, in the build up to like the college football season. They were like, oh, it's Olush Fashanu, but then maybe like. Like, Joe Alt, he's more of this mid-first round. I was like, oh, Joe Alt's a top 10, like, top 5. Like, I think he rivals Olu in this draft. So, it kind of surprised me seeing some draft analysts kind of say that. And then now here we are, like, five, five, six weeks into the college football season. It's like, yeah, no, Joe Alt's a top 10 pick. What y'all doing? So, that, that did kind of, like, surprise me a little bit. But Bengals would love to get another tackle there uh, to pair up with uh, Orlando... Brown, there we go. Orlando Brown, linked on his last name. Uh, like Jonah Williams, they're probably not bringing him back. They've already released uh, Leo Collins a couple of weeks ago. So finding that tackle of the future to pair up with Brown, very key. Uh, maybe going in the receiver class would be pretty fun too. But like Joe Alt's like, I think he kind of trumps anywhere outside of Brock Bowers. They do mention Brock Bowers here. Like Brock Bowers is up there as well. Like he he will be up there with Joe Alt for me as like a top 
five, seven prospect in this class, but we'll see. Oh, we got a fourth quarterback going in the first, like, top ten. Wow, Bo Nix going to the Patriots. Yeah, things have been, like, ever since, like, that Philly game where it was like, Mac Jones looked good. He has looked bad since. Like, he didn't look terrible against the Dolphins. These past two weeks have been awful. Like, really, really bad. Bo Nix feels like a plug and play. I know people kind of have uh, reservations, if you remember Auburn, Bo Nix. But he's a, he's, a, he's a radically different player. This is a guy that uh, works through his reads. And the decision making is much better. Uh, I think the accuracy has improved much. And, like, yeah, he is... He is a finely tuned machine there for Oregon. Top 10. I'm not against it when it comes to Bo Nix. I'm not. All right, number nine. Okay, let's just look at some other guys that did go in the first round here. Uh, Patrick Paul, Troy Fatanu, and Corey and Clark. The Corey and Clark's interesting. Uh, Brock Bowers going to the Cardinals. Okay, what? Hold on. Hold on here. Truth be told, Bowers would have been a first-round pick if he declared after his true freshman season. Facts. Uh, the 6'3", 235. I thought he was up to 240. Uh, he's automatically be a wide receiver one in Arizona, even as a tight end. That's true. You don't have to necessarily use him as only a tight end. I mean... They got Trey McBride there, but like you keep Trey McBride in line. Brock Myers, you could get fancy with it and like run a two tight end system. Like, oh, oh, wait, who's the OC? He came from Cleveland, right? Alex Van Velt? Van Pelt, right? True pet scene. There we go. It was Cleveland, not OC. Former tight ends coach there. Okay, I knew it was Cleveland. I was like, wait, though, no, I thought Van Pelt was still with. Uh, still with Cleveland as the OC. Why would he take the same position at a uh, essentially a, a worse franchise at the moment? Uh, but actually, that makes all the sense in the world because uh, Petzing is a, well, for one, former tight end coach. Two, over with Kevin Stefanski's scheme, they, they don't mind using multiple tight ends, like 12 personnel. So it's like, Okay, I can see this working, and you're essentially just getting the best player on the board. And if you're the Cardinals, you kind of want to do that. So, not against this one. Uh, New York Giants say Keon Coleman. He is vastly different than anything they really have currently at the wide receiver position. This is kind of like, oh, man, remember when we got Kenny Galladay and we thought that was going to be cool? Okay, this is us trying to get that right. Get into that big-bodied receiver. Green Bay Packers take Armarius Mims, baby. I love this cat. All right, so Bagdiari's on IR. He's probably missing the whole season. Uh, probably a cut, uh, cap casualty after this. Uh, but I love our Mayor Smith. He's currently missing time because of a... Uh, was it a peck? No, oh, I can't remember the injury specifically. But I think... No, it could have been a peck. But I think he's out for like four to six weeks. He'll return, but I think... He, Honestly, if he has a strong finish of the season and a good good play in the college football playoff, he will be right up there with Olu and Alts as OT1 in this class. Packers, we saw what their protection looked like without Bakhtiari and uh, Jenkins. Not good, so addressing that would make sense. Uh, or uh, New Orleans Saints take Chop Robinson. Ooh, I like that. They get a twitched out pass rusher. Pair up there with, uh, I guess, Carl Granderson for the future. Uh, you got also Cameron. Cam Jordan still playing well right now. So it's like Chop Robinson. You could kind of like, like dip into the... Uh, the rotation there it's like well what about isaiah fosky it's like yeah fosky's nice but like probably a better rotation player in my opinion but yeah no i'm i'm all for this uh saints are kind of hard to draft for because like you think they got a lot they don't have many holes but uh for the ones they do it's like okay who's the next like 
Is there, you don't want to really take an offensive interior this early. Maybe you go tackle and be like, okay, Pettin, Dane, Pettin, they did work. But to be fair, this is basically his rookie year after coming off an injury last season. And I thought he's, I think he's got a better game after game. Quarterback, I would consider quarterback. <laughs> I really would. Derek Carr has been bad. Uh, Arizona Cardinals with their second pick take Kool Aid McKinstry. This is just a really good pickup. If you go, if you're, if you're bailing with Kool Aid McKinstry and Brock Bowers, you get two blue chips in this class. It's beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Helps them with that coverage unit big time. That's kind of a banner draft for the Cardinals. Uh oh, and then they get JJ. Wait. JJ McCarthy went in this draft. Okay, so they probably he, you're, he's just kind of showing different. I don't know. I don't know what this is. I don't know what this is. Uh, Houston Texans take Malik Neighbors. Oh my goodness, what? I mean, Malik Neighbors is a great fit for Bobby Slug's offense, and you just keep adding playmakers. You gotta think you might go elsewhere. Cause like the defense is still kind of a work in like work in progress, especially when it comes to the defensive line. Very interesting. Los Angeles Chargers, they're gonna be taking Cooper DeGene. They did just trade JC Jackson. Michael Davis hasn't been that good this season. Uh Santi Samuel had a pick last game, so good for you. Uh, but they could add but definitely more depth at corner. But we, with DeGene, he could play in the box. He could play uh, slot. He could play safety. Like, th this dude could play really anywhere in the defensive backfield. And it's just kind of like, where does he fit best for your defense? So, I don't mind that. I like that. Ooh, we got Jacksonville Jaguars taking Graham Barton. I'm not this high on Graham Barton. I'm just not. Martin might not play left the left tackle spot. He currently occupies for the Duke Blue Devils due to the lack of length. But he's a dang good offensive lineman with versatility. Like I think it was recruited as a center. Like he it, but he played like he's played guard. Like you could literally start him all over the uh offensive line. Which for Jacksonville, you kind of look to the interior. You need help. So it's not bad. Uh, J.C. Latham going to the Washington Commanders makes sense to me, but he really does. Uh, Charles Leno, maybe you want to eventually move on from him. And to be fair, Andrew Wiley ain't all that good. So, like, he's fine. See, that that's basically just that, that adds how people feel about Wiley. Like... Oh, he'll have some games here and there. But for the most part, he can be pretty ah for your squad. Uh, don't know why they gave him three years, 24 million. Uh, Los Angeles Rams take Dallas Turner. Has Jared Verse been taken in this draft yet? Hold the freaking phone. I don't believe he wow, Jared Verse fallen like this. That's kind of that's kind of wonky. Good players fall in the draft, though. Oh, I just skipped one. Anywho, uh, pair of Dallas turn up with Byron Young. You get a nice young edge duo. Also, you got still got Aaron Donald, who is looking back to his Aaron Donald ways this season. So adding more help to the defense would go a long way. Michael Penix going to the Falcons. I actually think this is a great pick. Desmond Ritter is not good. Oh, maybe he gets better during the year. It's like, yeah, but... I don't know. I don't know. How much better does he get? Like, this offense actively tries to not put the ball in his hands. And even when they do, it's like they try to scheme some stuff up. But, yeah, no, Desmond Ritter ain't it. Michael Penix would give this offense just a nice bit of release. Because Desmond Ritter has his offense compressed into, yeah, we can only do a few things well because we don't trust the quarterback situation. I'm kind of curious when... Taylor Heineke will jump in the fray there. But I like Penix. Oh, you get the, he's, his meds are going to be important, but uh, if he plays out the rest of the season, that's back-to-back -back seasons where he's just been fully healthy. 
And you may look at his past injury woes and be like, maybe that was just some bad luck. Galen King going to the Colts. Colts could use more coverage help. Most definitely. They got Juju Brent. So that's kind of the future there. But outside of that, you got a bunch of guys that you're like, ah, we could definitely add some more depth and more talent at the corner position. This is such a volatile position. Pittsburgh Steelers State. Nate Wiggins. I think he's a great fit for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Tremendous athlete. Pairing him up with uh, Joey Porter Jr. Oh, man. I think you're probably set at corner then for the next decade. Tennessee Tyus take Emeka Buka. Interesting. It's interesting they get a slick route runner to pair up with D-Hop and Traylon Burks. So, okay. Yeah, I can get behind that. Uh, let's see how Seahawks are going to take Jerzon Newton. They would love that. Get a big, a, not necessarily big, but like they, they get a guy that's a very good run defender, but that's also just this penetrator. Uh, it just could bring pressure. Like, they picked up Dray uh, Draymond Jones to do that, but, like, Draymond, everyone knows Draymond, you know, he's not the most consistent run defender. With Newton, you're likely getting that. Like, he's been an elite run defender in college football. The Dallas Cow Cowboys get Jared Verse. Like, the rich get richer? Like, what is this? The Cowboys don't have a ton of pressing needs outside of the secondary. This late in the mock draft, there isn't an obvious pick here. So we go with best player available. Give them one of the most improved players in all of college football over the past two years. Florida State's Jared Verse. Fell to 24. That's, that's, that's kind of a big drop off. So like, yeah, I guess for Dallas, the rich do, do get richer here. And they kind of get a freak there. Jared Verse, who... Because eventually you have to do do have to move on from uh to Marcus Lawrence, but some people would be like, well, they got Sam Williams there too. And it's like, oh Williams, I mean doesn't it's not bad having a good really good rotation of uh talent there. Okay, Detroit Lions go Romo Dunze. Oh, they get a freak at wide receiver. Pair up with Amon Ross St. Brown, Jameson Williams, and honestly, they, they should have Josh Reynolds like just in the mix there moving forward. He has been great for them. So, like, just adding more firepower. Like, honestly, for your Lions, you don't got a ton of pressing needs. And maybe you look at like, okay, a lot of the top corners fell off, like all right, off the board at this point. So maybe we just go with a freaky receiver, a guy with this nice blend of size and speed, you know, doing say. Miami Dolphins take Patrick Paul. Ooh, I, I got my, I got my reservations about Patrick Paul. Sometimes I think he is just a, uh, like, I feel like he, he could be more technically sound. Uh, he doesn't really face top competition, but I get people like the size, they like the athletic ability, the length. But I'm wondering, like, I uh, like. Is he a guy that you probably don't start year one? I don't know. I'm kind of curious about that. But I mean, you're the Dolphins. You're picking 26. You're probably not going to find a guy that can necessarily start uh, day one. Usually, this part of the draft. I mean, I mean, Taron Armstrong's hurt all the time. So you kind of got to do it, right? Like Patrick Paul, I firmly have in the like the third round area right now. Because uh, I go back and I didn't think he had the most impressive game against Tyree Wilson and... We've seen how that talent for Tyree Wilson, how that's translated thus far to the NFL. It, it hasn't. So, I don't know, man. I don't know. Maybe I'll feel different about Patrick uh, Paul we get later in the process. I know people are high on him, though. Tampa Bay Buccaneers, a Braylon tries. Get some help in that pass rush outside of Shaquille Barrett. Uh, like, they've seen a game or two from Joe Tryon. But Shaquille Barrett, he's, he's up there in years too, you know? So it's like, you want to find those next young pass rushers, you know, that you can elevate. So taking a swing on a Braylon Trice ain't a half bad idea. Dude is a thick, thick boy. 
Buffalo Bills go Cameron Kitchens. I mean, the value's there. Uh, the dynamic duo is getting up there in age as there are contracts. Yes, yes. I think uh, Dorian Poyer will only have a year left on his contract after this. And I think Mike Hyde's probably a free agent after this season. Not positive. Don't quote me. Uh, they did bring in Tyler, uh, Taylor Rapp. They do have DeMar Hamlin. But, like, like Kitchen's just a different animal. Like, dude's built different. Uh, I, like, he, he's a cat that... He's got the size uh, being kind of a condensed to come play in the box. He's got the range to be a true center fielder, true nose for the football. Love the dude. Baltimore Ravens, they're going to go with Mason Smith. They can hit kind of a freak athlete here. And Mason Smith, don't know if he comes out. He, he hasn't been that productive this season, to be fair. They're kind of just using him at nose at this point where you're not going to find a lot of production. And it's like, oh, he's such a great athlete, you know. Just get fun with him. Move him around the, uh, the the defensive line. Like, his freshman year, he was on the edge. Like, get fun with this dude. But, yeah, I guess it is what it is. Uh, Michael Pierce is usually a guy that gets hurt a lot for Baltimore. Well, anywhere he's at, whether it's Minnesota. Uh, but, like, when he's on the field, like, he's great. It's just, like, He's typically hurt all the time. I think Matabuke's got a contract coming up, so maybe you want to get more depth there on the interior line. So not out of the realm of possibility. Uh, Leonard Taylor, my boy, going to San Francisco 49ers. They would, they, they just keep adding to this defensive line. I mean, to be fair, the Niners love addressing the trenches. They really, really do. But, ah, Lee, man. Like, Leonard Taylor moves like a linebacker at 305. Like, bounces all around the line. He can create havoc in the backfield. Like, Javon Hargrave, he's, oh, they did sign him, but he's, in, he's an older player. Javon Kinlaw, kind of emerging this year, right? After being a bust for, like, First three years of his deal. But I mean, yeah, I mean, I, I don't, I'm not opposed to it. Like you, I know there's going to be people in the chat that are like, yo, what about our offensive line? And I'm like, uh, 49ers get a Niner, get a Niner, dude. They love the trenches. Uh, Kansas City gets AD Mitchell. So this is kind of a replacement because I think MVS's contracts coming up soon, potentially. Because he was a three-year deal. This is year two of that. They could probably get out of it. Uh, don't quote me on those numbers. Not positive. Just something in the back of my head that's telling me that's the case. Uh, so you get a big vertical option. And who's a very good route runner. Who might probably has better ball skills than MVS. I'm just I'm going to go out on a limb here and say very likely has better ball skills than MVS. Uh, then Z okay, Xavier Leggett made it in here, yo. Let's go. I love me Xavier Leggett. Leggett is one of the biggest risers this season. Darn right he is, dude. Uh, this summer, the six foot three, two hundred and twenty seven pounder senior receiver was an afterthought in the draft community until North Carolina, South Carolina, where I was like, who is this man? Oh. Broke out in a huge way. Could even find himself in the first round. The combination of size and speed is unique. And he's certainly fourth in the country in receiving yards. He's currently, not certainly, but currently. I like that. I like that. I don't know if this is exactly what the Eagles would go with. Uh, Eagles probably go with best available, you know. But, I mean, that, that can literally mean anything. But I love giving Xavier Leggett some shine, dude. I'm a huge fan of Xavier Leggett. Uh, you're going to see him when we talk about... Because uh, we're going to be doing our quarter of the year. We're, we're literally quarter of the way through college football and the NFL. So I'm going to go back on my prospect rankings and see kind of where guys line up. And you're you're going to see like it in my receivers. Guaranteed, dude. But uh, that's it for the video. Go ahead. Do that YouTube thing. And as always, until next time, you be easy, my friends. Later.